Hey guys and welcome back to a new video in the next part of Android Basics in which I will talk about so-called view models. And view models themselves aren't a concept that only applies to Android apps, but they have some kind of a special place on Android and in this video I will explain why. I will start with some theory here so you actually understand what a view model is. And then I will show you some examples in code. So normally when we build apps, then we try to bring some kind of consistency into our code base so that it remains scalable and understandable. And for that, we typically use so-called architectural design patterns. So maybe you've already heard of MVVM, MVI, MVC, MVP. There are a lot of different such design patterns out there which outline kind of rules how we should structure our application. And on Android, specifically MVVM is one of the most popular of such design patterns. And at this point, we really don't need to understand that pattern itself in detail. It's just that MVVM stands for model, view, view model. And you can see there is this view model involved in that design pattern. And if we just take a look at this rough design pattern here at this uh, sketch, then the view, as you can see on the left, that is basically just your apps UI. So you want to isolate the UI, so just what's visible on the screen for the user. Then on the other hand, we have the model, which is where your app's data lives. So for example, if you have a contact list app, then this would be the place where you have your database and where you save your list of contacts. But also, for example, if you interact with the remote API, then this would also live in the model. And the view model is now the bridge between the view and the model. That is why it's called view model. You can see it's in between here. And its job is now to, on the one hand, take the raw data from the model. So for example, your list of contacts in your contacts list app, and then it will take the data and bring it into a new format, which is easy to display on the UI. Because very often we save our data in a format that we don't want to use exactly like that on the UI. An example would be that you have some kind of Unix timestamp that represents a specific date and time, which in the end, just a long number. So it's, it's really easy to save that in a database. But if you would show that Unix timestamp to a user, then that wouldn't be understandable. The user would not be able to guess what date that is in their local time zone. They would not be able to guess what time that is. So what the view model will now do is it will take that contact from the model with that Unix timestamp and it will convert that to a format the UI understands. So in this case, it will probably just format the date to a real readable date. And then as soon as that happens, the view model will then automatically notify the UI that there is a change, that there is a new contact in the context list, so the UI can update and show that new contact on the screen. But it also receives such events and actions from the other side, so from the view, since when there is some kind of UI action, as you can see here, and that can be something like a button click, or maybe the user swipe to a different page on the screen, then this is considered a user action. And the view, so the UI, will then send that user action to the view model, so the view model can react to it. And this can either be that the view model just changes some state. For example, you click on a button and suddenly the background color of your app changes to red or so. That would not need the model in this case, since the UI action would just be the button click, the view model updates the state that the background color changed and notifies the UI so the UI can show the new background color. But what could also be is that the user clicks on some kind of button save new contact. For example, when they entered all details, the name, phone number for a new contact, they sent that data to the view model and now the view model needs to take it and also send it further to the model since that contact needs to be persistently saved. So in that case, whenever something has to do with a real data source, then the model gets involved on um, the view model, sends that new data to the model the model saves it, notifies the view model again, and the view model will then notify the UI again. And normally these view models are pretty much just models for a view. So that can be just one single UI component such as a list item. However, on Android, it's much more common that we actually have one view model per screen so that this view model would just accept all user actions that come from that screen and then also keep all the states, so all the values that can change over time that have some kind of effect on how the app looks like, on how the UI looks like, and would then also send these updates again to the UI so the UI can also show these properly. And now I want to show you such a view model in action, how we can create it in Android and then after that we'll explain why they really have that special place on Android and also why I decided to make that a separate video in the Android Basics playlist even though view model itself is not an Android concept but rather just a concept of uh, these design patterns that use view models. So I'm here in a very blank Android Studio project and all we really want to do for a view model is we want to create class. A view model is nothing else than just a plain class. So in our root package, let's create a new file. Sample view model, for example. Or we could call it context view model if that would be for a context screen. We make that a class and boom, 
we have a view model. That's really everything about it for now. And in here, we would now put in all the functions that uh, the UI would call when there's some kind of user action. Again, for example, a button click. For example, to change our background color, um, to take the simple example from previously. So we have function change background color and this could, of course, also take some parameters, but in this case, you want to keep it simple and just change it from white to red, for example. So we now need some kind of variable that will trigger the state change, so the change in the background color, which will then notify the UI, there is a new background color, please show that on the screen. And now you have to be a bit familiar with Jetpack Compose, which is what we use for building UI uh, on Android. If not, I will still try to keep this as simple as possible, but for... Um, yeah, deep dive into Jetpack Compose. I have a crash course, a one hour crash course and um, a more dedicated playlist towards this topic. In the end, we want to have um, actually a public var called background color, for example. And here we can say that is by mutable state off. So we make that a Jetpack Compose state. And whenever this variable now changes, um, Jetpack Compose is built in a way that it will receive these updates automatically. So it can react to this new background color. It is a mutable state off. Now we need to set a default color, which is just white, for example. Alt enter to um, import this. Alt enter import this again. And then what we also usually do is we make that a private set. So we only want to be able to change these states, um, like so these values that can change over time, such as this background color in this case, from within this view model. We don't want that the UI calls something like view model that background color is equal to green because the responsibility for this to change the state and to notify the UI is solely here in this view model. And with this private set, we just make sure that the UI can read this property, but it cannot set it. And now when the user clicks on the button to change the background color, we will call view model that change background color. And in here, we now just want to change this background color, for example, to color.red. So this will just update the property. And since this is a compose state, it will notify the UI, which can then update so yeah, the UI correspondingly. So now we can go to main activity. And in here, in set content, that is where we put our UI setup. Again, if you're new to Jetpack Compose or new to Android UI building, then don't um, put too much focus here on this. Um, you, you don't need to understand that in detail what happens here. But just to be able to show you um, a click on a button, we need to build a little bit of UI here. Um, so on the one hand, let's actually leave the surface um, where we can assign a background color. Let's remove this comment. But inside of the surface, we want to have a button. And here we have an on-click lambda, which gets called when we click this button. Instead of this block, we can just put some text that will be displayed on the button, something like change color. And when we now click this button, we now want to have a view model instance of which we then call this change background color function. And we can just create this view model instance here. Um, and this is now very basic. This is not the final form. I will explain um, some issues of the approach I will use now, but just that you really understand the whole concept, let's do it step by step. So let's ha say we have a private val view model, and that is just a new context view model. And by the way, if you were to use a model, so some kind of data source, maybe in form of a repository, then you would just put this in the constructor of the context view model. You could use it in here, so the data source, the repository, and um, yeah, then the view model would communicate with that. And if we now go to our button and say view model, dot change background color and we go ahead to this surface color here and we change this to view model dot background color so it will always take the color from our view model and then launch our app on our emulator and wait a little mo a moment until that is booted up and okay for some reason the button fills the whole size which i think um is because of the surface but it doesn't matter we should see the background color change here where we still have these white sections on our screen right now it's white but if we click this button then you can see it turns red. But now let's finally come to why view models have this special place on Android. Let's take a look what happens if we rotate our device. As you can see, boom, the background is white again. Mm. If we now click change color again, it will turn red, but every time we rotate it, it will just reset. And this is also not only the case for screen rotations, but also, for example, if we switch our theme uh, by going to our settings here and uh, triggering dark theme, Let's change this to on. And you will see we suddenly have a white background again. It's not red. So what the heck happens here? And I already teased this a little bit in the video about activities and their life cycle. Because what happens here inside the activity, 
When we rotate the device, then that is called a configuration change. And on Android, we have lots of these configuration changes. Our screen rotations are the most common one, but it basically just means a change in configuration. Configuration can be uh, that the user changes the language and the app just needs to update all strings in the app. It can be changing the theme, so the app needs to update all colors of all the views uh, in the app. But it can also be something like a screen rotation where the app just needs to show a potentially different layout, which is used for landscape mode. And the way Android handles these problems when such configuration changes is it will completely recreate the current activity. Recreating means the current instance of the activity is completely destroyed, the lifecycle will move till the on destroy state, all resources are freed up, and then when the rotation finished, it will start with a completely fresh new activity. And what will happen in that case is, when the screen rotation finished, the main activity, main activity will be completely recreated, and that means the view model instance here will also be recreated. So all the values in the view model will be set to their default values again. And this is of course something we don't want because that is something a user would never expect that when they rotate their device, the screen gets completely reset and all the states get reset to their default values. And that is why Google introduced their own kind of version of a view model, which still has the same responsibility as a normal view model in the MVVM pattern. So if you were to build an iOS app with the MVVM pattern, then it would work just like this because iOS doesn't have this problem of configuration changes. But on Android, what we need to do is we need to go ahead here and we need to make this context view model inherit from view model which comes from Android X lifecycle. So then it is officially an Android view model, you can, you can uh, call it so. And what this will now do is it will create a component, a view model, which will outlive the lifecycle of its screen. So in our case, the screen is the activity and the activity has a certain life cycle, which ends when we rotate the device, then this view model, since it now inherits from view model, will outlive that. So that means the view model won't get destroyed when the activity gets destroyed. Instead, the view model will only be destroyed when the user actually actively pops the activity from the back stack. So when the user is on the activity and clicks on the back button, so that means they want to go to the previous screen. So yeah, that screen is not needed anymore with this view model and then the view model will be destroyed. But it won't be destroyed for simple configuration changes. And right now, if you take a look at main activity, this will still not work because we still again initialize a completely new view model instance whenever this activity is created. Instead, we also need to use the Android way of initializing a view model for which we have mainly two options. On the one hand, we can say by view models, this one here, and then we specify the type of our view model, so context view model. And if we now relaunch this, take a look here. If we then click the button, it will turn red. If we now rotate the device, you can see the, the background will now stay red because we really created that Android specific uh, view model instance which will outlive the lifecycle of our activity. But very often you're also deep down in some compose screens and you don't have direct access to the activity to initialize your view model. In that case, what you can also do is you can remove this and you can use a specific uh, compose import or compose version to initialize that. Um, so you could say, well, view model is equal to view model. Um, it actually needs a specific dependency. So to be able to have this version of initializing a view model in Compose, you would need to go to Gradle scripts, build that Gradle module app. And in here, um, don't worry, you don't need to understand that for now. If you're new to Android, you need to scroll down to this dependencies block. So here you can basically just include third-party libraries um, or also first-party libraries if it's one from Google like this one. And you would need to paste this line implementation, Android X lifecycle, lifecycle view model compose. Then we want to synchronize this. So click sync now and go back to main activity. When that sync is finished, we should be able to see this new function. If we type is equal to view model, yes, this green one here. Uh, so just use this. We need to spe specify that this is a context view model. And then again, if we launch this, we should see that this still works. If we have a configuration change, okay, I get some duplicate class issues here. Um, if you don't get that, then ignore it, that's fine. But in my case, this sometimes happens when I create new projects and we can simply fix this by updating the Kotlin version. For that, we go to build at Gradle project. We change the Kotlin version to 1.8.10. And in our build at Gradle app file, we change this Kotlin compiler extension version to 1.4.3. Synchronize this and this, would, this should hopefully fix it. Yes, that is looking good. So uh, my app is launching. If I click change color now, rotate the device, 
and then you can see the background will remain red. Just one more thing you will notice as soon as you use a constructor for your view model right here, for example, to provide some dependencies the view model needs, so some other classes like the model, for example, in form of a repository class. But let's just keep this simple and pass a simple hello world string or so. Then you will notice that if we launch this, take a look here, our app will crash. Why is that? Because now Android suddenly doesn't know anymore how it should create that view model instance since it needs some constructor parameters which we did not provide. And since we have to use this special way of initializing view model with this and we can't just um, create it with like, yeah, just like no, creating a normal class where we can pass the constructor arguments. Android doesn't know at this point how to do that. And what we need in this case is a so-called view model factory. So basically a class that defines how our view model instance is to be created. Later on, there are solutions on Android and um, dependencies and frameworks you can use um, to kind of bypass this or to delegate this to some kind of code generator. So you don't need to write this factory on your own. But by default, this is still needed for every single view model that needs some form of constructor arguments. And we can do this by going in inside of these parentheses, um, hitting control or command P. And you can see there is a parameter called factory, which needs to return a view model provider that factory. And we can assign that here by saying factory is equal to this piece of code, but it's actually not a Lambda function. We can just return a new instance of a view model provider that factory. And you can of course also put this factory in a separate file or instead of the view model file, and then just um, create an instance of it here. And here we can override the create function. Um, we just want to override the normal create function with just a model class parameter. And this is called when Android tries to create an instance of your view model. And by default, it's just called super.create, which will yeah, just try to create an instance of your view model. If it does not need any parameters, it will work and else it will crash as we just saw. We, on the other hand, now want to remove this and replace it with context view model. So we can now return an instance of this. And here we can now provide our hello world string like this. And we also need to cast that as a generic type T so that Android Studio doesn't complain here. If we now launch this on our device, then now we should not see a crash because our app is working. It knows how to create this view model. If we click this button, then the background will change to red again. So those are really the absolute basics about view models in Android. There are some further concepts um, like the lifecycle of a view model and how we can scope view models and the, their lifetime to specific parts of our app. Since we don't always want to scope them to the whole activity, which would basically mean we have one view model for our whole app if we use a single activity, or at least all view models would live as long as our app uh, lives, but we usually only need them for a specific screen. But there are also ways to, for example, share one view model instance across multiple screens, which I have a separate video about. Um, but I think this video should have already um, covered the most important aspects to help you understand what view models are, how you can use them in your code, and why they have such a special place on Android and why you will see them in most products out there. So if you like this Android Basics video, then you will definitely also love the future Android Basics videos, which will come very soon. So definitely subscribe to this channel to not miss them. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye bye.